Hello, my name is Alejandro Murillo with GSC and I am an applications engineer. Today we're going to take a look at recognizing milling features that contain top and bottom fillets. There are two types of milling features you can recognize in SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAM Works. There are two and a half axis features and multi-surface features. If you have a top or bottom fillet, you technically can recognize those features as two and a half axis features. Ideally though, you're going to want to recognize those features as multi-surface features. So I am going to show you an example of how to do both methods and why one is better than the other. So if we jump into SOLIDWORKS, here you can see I have a part. We have four different uh, milling features that we're going to wish to machine. They are essentially four pockets. Uh, you can see there the pocket on the left has a fillet on the bottom. The pocket next to it this, uh, has a fillet on the top edge of the pocket. The third pocket has fillets on the top and bottom edge. And the third pocket has fillets on the top and bottom and even in the corners. So we're going to be machining each one of these pockets using the first three. I'm going to show you that you can machine fillets or pockets with fillets on the top or bottom using, using two and a half axis features. Uh, and then on the fourth example, we're going to create a multi-surface feature in order to machine that pocket. If we jump into SOLIDWORKS CAM, you can see that we've already created our setup. Here you can see we've selected a three axis milling machine. We've defined our stock, which is just the bounding box of the part. We've defined our coordinate system. And we've also created a mill part setup. We're gonna be machining from the, we're gonna be machining the top of the part. So the first feature we're gonna recognize and machine is gonna be the feature that's all the way on the left, which is this pocket with a constant bottom fillet. The best way that I have used to recognize pockets with bottom or top fillets is to use a tool called Recognize Local Features. It's essentially automatic feature recognition, but just for specific features. If I right click my mill part setup, you'll see where this command lies. It's called Recognize Local Features. And what this does is I can pre-select faces of the feature I want to recognize, and then by activating Recognize Local Features, it will define that feature made up of those faces that I pre-selected. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-select the faces of the feature that I wanna recognize. So it's this pocket with the constant bottom fillet. Then I'm gonna right click my setup and select recognize local features. And you can see here, it recognized one feature. If I hover over the feature that I recognize, you can see this rectang rectangular pocket one. You'll notice, you'll be able to tell if it correctly height, if it correctly recognized the feature by the highlighting. You can see here the top profile and there you can see the bottom profile. Now it's not going to highlight uh, the fillet edges, uh, but typically if you see something like this, you know that it was able to recognize the feature correctly, including the constant bottom fillet. If we go into our feature itself, we're going to modify our pre-save strategy. So here we have a whole bunch of pre-save strategies. I have a strategy that I've already created called rough finish fillet that I'll use. That's going to do a rough mill and a contour mill with specific tools. I'll hit OK. I'll go ahead and generate my operational plan. You can see here my rough mill and my contour mill operations. I'll go ahead and generate my tool paths. And you can see what it's doing there. So it first roughs it out. And you can even see there, once it starts hitting the fillet, it starts, you know, sort of tapering in. And then here we have my contour mill operation. And you can see there that it is machining or does recognize that constant bottom fillet at the bottom. We can go ahead and even simulate this. So as you saw there, uh, recognize local features, very useful tool for recognizing two and a half axis features 
with a bottom or top fillet. Next, let's go ahead and recognize a pocket feature with a top fillet. So we're gonna use the same method. We're gonna use that recognize local features. So I'll go ahead and highlight the necessary faces. In my mill part setup, I'll go ahead and activate recognize local features. You can see here one feature was recognized. If I hover over my rectangular pocket two feature, you can see here by the red highlighting that the top and bottom profile are correct. I'll go ahead and modify my pre-selected strategy. So under strategy, once again, for those who aren't aware, one of the big powerful uses of SOLIDWORKS CAM is that you can create predefined strategies for machining features. In my case, I have a strategy called Rough Finish Fillet 2. And once again, it's going to do a rough mill operation, a contour mill operation with specific tools and step overs and step downs. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'll go ahead and generate my operational plan. Uh, it's going to generate an additional rough and contour mill operation. I'll go ahead and generate the tool paths, and you can see them there. There's my rough mill. As you can see there, our step downs are not very small, so we can always go in and modify that. And then you can see my contour mill. And in my contour mill, you can really see that it is recognizing and machining that top constant fillet. Let me go ahead and suppress these first two so we can just see the simulation of the second pocket feature. All right, let's go ahead and run the simulation. And as you see there, it was able to machine the pocket, including recognizing and machining that top fillet. So next, we're going to go ahead and machine our third pocket. In this pocket, we have both a constant top and a constant bottom fillet. So we'll go ahead and pre-select our faces in preparation for using recognize local features command. So all of our faces have now been highlighted. We'll go ahead and go to our feature tree. And under our setup, we'll select recognize local features. So one feature was recognized. If you hover over rectangular pocket three, which is our new feature, you can see here the, the red outlines show you that we have the correct top and bottom profile. We're gonna go ahead and modify our predefined strategy. So we're gonna select rough finish fillet three. And once again, it's a predefined strategy. It's gonna create a rough mill and a contour mill operation with specific tools and step overs and step downs. I'll generate the operational plan. That's gonna create an additional rough and contour mill operation. We'll go ahead and generate the tool paths, which you can see them right there. If I hover over the rough mill operation, obviously our step downs are very large. So you don't really get to see much, but you can kind of see it there. You can see that the bottom, it's machining less material compared to the top. Uh, if we look at a contour mill operation, we can really see that it is seeing and recognizing the top and bottom fillet. Let's go ahead and suppress our previous two operations. And then we're just going to simulate these two new operations that we created for our third pocket. So you can see there, 
it was able to recognize and machine both the top and bottom fillet. And obviously, if you want a smoother finish, you can always adjust the step downs. So we can recognize two and a half axis features with top or bottom fillets. So next, we're going to go ahead and create a feature uh, for machining the last pocket here. Uh, and this time, we're not going to define this as a two and a half axis feature. We're going to define this as a multi-surface feature. So in CAMWorks, you can recognize two types of features, two and a half axis. For, for milling, you can recognize two types of features, two and a half axis features and multi-surface features. If for whatever reason you aren't able to recognize uh, pockets that have complex fillets or complex surfaces, maybe the bottom surface isn't flat with, uh, with your machining setup or parallel with your machining setup, then really you should be defining this pocket as a multi-surface feature. Um, so a lot of times when I have po complex pockets with variable fillets or, uh, or complex uh, geometry, really it should be defined as a multi-surface feature. So let's go ahead. So if I go over, over here to my Camworks feature tree, I'm going to right-click my mill setup, and I'm going to define a multi-surface feature. All the previous examples, we were defining two and a half axis features using the recognize local features command. This time we're going to recognize this last pocket as a multi-surface feature. Here, it's going to prompt us to select all the surfaces currently displayed or select specific ones. I'll go ahead and pick specific surfaces. And you'll just select them one by one. Okay, so now all the surfaces has been, have been selected. For my, pre, for my strategy, here are some already existing pre-saved strategies. I actually created one here myself called Area Z Level Fillet 4. And that's going to create an area clearance operation. That's the same, essentially the same thing as a roughing operation, but for multi-surface features. And then you have a Z Level operation, which is a finishing operation, uh, kind of like the contour uh, operation uh, for two and a half axis features. Uh, not exactly, but similar, same purpose. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can see here a multi surface feature was created, and you can see uh, it being highlighted. Now, when creating multi surface features, you will have to add contain areas. That way, you only machine the areas that you, uh, that you selected. So just to show you what I mean, I'll go ahead and generate an operational plan. I'm going to go ahead and suppress these two older features so we don't look at them in the simulation. So here we have an area clearance, which is the roughing operation for multi-surface features. And here we have the Z-level operation, which is the finishing operation for multi-surface features. I'll go ahead and generate the toolpath. And if I hover over, you can see here there are a lot of lines being generated, and that's because we have to add a contain area. So with multi-surface features, you do have to tell it, hey, where am I allowed to machine? So I'll go ahead and add a contain area. You can actually add a contain area from, with this, from within this right-click menu, or if you actually go inside of the operation itself, and you go under geometry, there's an area for adding contain areas. So we'll go ahead and add one. Here you can see your contain area menu. So we can select, at, uh, you can select face uh, edges. So there you can see it went ahead and looped around. So our machining can only occur inside of this boundary. And if I go ahead and rebuild the preview the toolpath, you'll see that not only the machining is occurring within that area, it's machining those surfaces within that contain area.
And then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and copy this container area over to my Z level. Uh, I actually technically don't require it, but I'll go ahead and do it anyways. So if I hold control and drag the contain area to the Z level operation, you can see that it adds that contain area. And I'll go ahead and rebuild my toolpath. And you can see here the toolpaths. Now, one big advantage of also defining this as a multi-surface feature is you have a lot more options. You have a lot more flexibility. Uh, if your pocket, uh, if the pocket's floor is not flat to your mill setup, it'll still be able to recognize that pocket. So it can recognize more complex pockets with more complex surface geometry. Another thing is you also have more control and more, more machining options for your toolpath. If I go inside the area clearance, operation depending on your level of license you will have more pattern options you will have uh, more advanced options um, you'll have linking capabilities and so on and you can create contain areas and avoid areas so there's a lot more control and more capability uh, when you define a pocket as a multi-surface feature there's more stuff you can do with your toolpaths So let's go ahead and simulate this. So there you can see that's our area roughing, our area clearance, which is the roughing toolpath. And here's our Z level finish. And obviously here you can go in and manipulate, maybe pick a smaller tool to get these, to get some of this leftover areas, uh, modify your step over, step down and so on. Uh, but there you can clearly see that it did register and understand that there were fillets there that you needed to machine so defining pockets with fillets as multi-surface features definitely is probably going to be your best option it's going to give you more capabilities with regards to your tool paths um, and the pocket geometry uh, does can be can be complex your fillets can be complex your your, uh, your pocket itself geometry can be complex and it will still recognize and machine it appropriately. So that's how you can recognize and machine pocket features with fillets inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM. If you are interested in additional content related to SOLIDWORKS CAM or have questions relating to a SOLIDWORKS product, please feel free to visit us at gsc-3d.com. This has been Alejandro with GSC. Thanks for watching.